Hey, Jesse here real quick before we get into episode four. Uh, don't forget to like this episode. Don't forget to subscribe. Like the other episodes. This is episode four, so you got to go back and watch the other three. Okay. Uh, but again, like it, follow it, subscribe to it. Good to go. And now the start of the show or episode or whatever the fuck it is. Hey, Jesse here uh, with New Western Hunter, episode four. Today, we're going to talk about optics. Uh, Not optics on your rifle. We already kind of discussed that, but there are some similarities in regards to the terminology that we're going to use. Okay. Uh, But first, it turns out that I got a couple of fucking sponsors. All right. Uh, First one, and these are uh, plugs for a couple of great podcasts. Uh, The first one is Test Depth. Um, which I had mentioned before, it is a veterans, uh, podcast for specifically for submariners. Um, but if you had ever been up in the middle of the night with your fellow friends or anything like that, doing God's work, uh, the discussions that you've had, well, that this is the podcast for you. Another great one. And it's, uh, just general bullshitting. I know it's getting towards hunting season. So they're going to start tailoring their discussions to that. It's called flapping your gums with Vinny and Hesse. Uh, it's a good friend of mine up in Nevada, him and his brother, uh, his brother's out of Utah. They started a podcast. It's all over Spotify. It's on YouTube. Um, it's on your general Apple podcast also, right? It's a great listen to. They're not very long. Uh, recommend both of those. Um, and another one uh, for photos, uh, if you want a some content film, if you weddings or if you're in the fitness and you want a fitness competition, uh, take a picture or film, take a look at rep photo. OK, uh, Instagram is rep underscore photo. Uh, a good friend of mine, Adrian, he's done some uh, content for me on some archery stuff. Please check that out. Uh, it's on Instagram. Uh, highly, highly recommend that. And the last one is coffee, absolute bearing coffee. Turns out he, uh, John and his wife are going to donate, uh, 20, 25 pounds to a veteran's elk camp I got coming on in September. And I'm very, very grateful for that. And, uh, thanks again, John and Lisa. So optics, right? Uh, very first thing we're going to talk about is a couple of necessities you absolutely need when backcountry hunting. Okay. Um, and that is binoculars and a range finder. Oh my God, that got on really, really quick. Anyway, uh, so this is, I'm just running, I, we wrote packs and systems uh, later on, but there's no reason why we can't talk about this now. This is the FHF uh, Bino, right? It's got a lot of Molly systems, a lot of good stuff. I have a carry a survival kit underneath. Um, with that, I have a compass, an reflective armband, a light. I got a lighter in there um, and some little fire starters. I can go over why I carry that. It's kind of important, right? I got my uh, GPS uh, Garmin here. And then on this side, I carry my rangefinder, okay? And I got it tethered to me. So if I let go of it, it just falls. I can pick it back up. This is uh, a Leupold. Um It is the RXI 1600. Um, I beat the living shit out of this. Now, this is five years old. I've only changed the battery. Well, I've changed the battery twice, right? It's got different modes. Um, I like using it in archery mode because it gives you a bearing cut if you're doing an up or a down angle. And um, that's kind of important. And it's great for archery and it goes straight over to rifle. Uh, You can program it to put your dope in here for your rifle and your ballistics. I'd rather do my own calculations. And that's why I have a Kestrel and that's what I use it for. But you absolutely need a rangefinder. Okay, very, very important. It's easy. You turn it on with a click, you point it, and then you hit it while you're looking through there. It's good to go. It's also a 1x-ish magnification. So I've actually used this as a binocular. Um, if my eyes get tired looking through, I can use that. Um, it's a little bit of a zoom. It's not much, but it's just a, maybe a change of view. All right, and then inside here, I carry uh, my binoculars. These are uh, the Leupold BX2 Alpines. They are not the top of the line. These are the 10 by 42s. Um, a lot of people like a bigger objective, 42 meaning it's the objective size. The bigger the objective, the more light you let in, the more clarity you're gonna have in lower light situations. The trade-off, it's a heavier uh, binocular or a heavier item, right? And I got a couple spotting scopes we'll talk about. 10, it just means tag magnification. I have found this extremely useful for any situation that I'm in. Um, They make bigger scope or bigger binoculars, like I said. They also make them with a range finder integrated. 
this with the core insider discount at Leupold, I think cost 200 and 220 dollars, maybe less, um, which is a great bargain for a set of binoculars. And they've 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 stood the test of time. Uh, they've been submerged. They've been drowned. They've been frozen. They've been baked. They've been forgot about on top of my truck. All right. These things are absolutely great. It's easy. You put them up. It's a quick magnification. You can play with the diopter a little bit to give you a little bit of an eye relief. Um, I found them absolutely, again, amazing. They have little straps that comes with this, uh, which I can hook into here and hooks onto this. I really don't use it because I use these. I'll use my uh, walking stick and I'll place them on my walking stick. I'll use them on top of a tripod or I just hang out put my back up against something with my backpack. All right. They fit nicely inside there. Um, I do have a new chest rig coming from Kafaru. Uh, I'm excited to try that out. I'm going to try that out for my first hunt this season. And if I don't like it, I'll go back to my chest rig. Uh, and when we go over pack systems, I'll go over more detail on this chest rig. I do like this because of the rear pocket. It actually slides my cell phone um, in pretty pretty dang nicely right so when i'm walking around i always know where my phone's at it's on me really quick i can pull it out for directions map whatever the case is right these are two necessities you need to have right budget accordingly do your shopping get them uh vortex makes a great one i've just been partial to Leupold. just that was my first one and i like how they operate and i like the clarity of it all right so uh next thing is pretty important is uh your spotting scope not a requirement but depending on where you're hunting, you may be sitting behind some glass for hours and hours and hours on end. All right. Uh, this November, we're doing a coos deer hunt down in southern Arizona. That is going to require me sitting on a ridge behind some glass probably all, every, all day, every day until we spot something. Um, they're small animals. They're very hard to see. There's a reason they're called the gray ghost. But I actually think it's one of the therapeutic things I love about hunting is sitting up by yourself without humans, just you and nature, and you're looking for things. And you never know what, you might not know what, you're not find what you're looking for, but you're going to find something, okay? Um, and it's, God, it's enjoyable, right? So you can go a little bit, um, well, actually, let's go bottom, bottom of the line. A friend of mine gave this to me to throw away or sell. Uh, this is a Celestron Ultimate 80. This thing weighs about, a half a pound. Um, so I will say if you get something this big and it's that light, quality is probably not there. All right. But an 80 is referring to the 80 millimeter objective, which means it's letting in a lot of light. Okay. Uh, it is a 20 to 60. Keep in mind, binoculars are a 10, right? So there's a whole spectrum in there not really being addressed. Uh, you can zoom and then your fine focus is right here. Think of this in your backpack. It's taking up a lot of fucking room, all right? It's taking up a lot of room. This might be more conducive to sit in your truck, right? If you're truck hunting or it's bad weather and you don't want to get out and you're driving all these logging roads and you just find some good spots to glass, absolutely, this is something you might want to keep in the back of your truck. Keep it in the back of your truck at all times, okay? And this would be very good. Maybe uh, you can get a windowsill mount, mount it there, and you just sit down and you take a look. Or you put it on a tripod, grab a lawn chair out of the back of your truck, and hang out and just glass over ridges right? Uh, side by side truck, whatever the case is. Um, like I said, this is a Celestron. I, I have no idea how much this thing costs. I want to buy one, but this is a lower model. Okay. Um, next up is, uh, I have a little fold SX four. This is, uh, the pro guide, uh, with a discount. I need like four or 500, maybe 600 bucks. I think retail is about eight, seven, seven fifty, eight hundred. This is a 56 mil objective and this is a 15 to 45. Okay. This has been my go-to for the last couple of years. Um, it is heavier, definitely heavy. Uh, it's a lot smaller than the other one, right? So if I were to compare them, big difference, uh, not as good magnification, but the clarity is a lot better because it's the quality of glass. Okay. It's even not a big of objective, but the light on something like that is absolutely amazing. Um, it has been in my backpack for quite a few years now, and it's been great. It's been my friend on many a cold morning on a ridge or many a late night. Uh, I really do enjoy it uh, looking through here. You can get things for magnification. I think phone scope makes a good one for these particular. I'm not, I used to run phone scope. They just move a little bit too much for me. I run an Olin system, which I'll show you on my next scope. All right. Uh, 
that this has been good. This is going to be my backup. This is going to be my truck scope now. Um, I usually keep it in this particular case. So uh, marsupial makes scope cases specifically for angled scopes and straight scopes. Um, and then they make one for my new uh, Swaro, which I'll show you. But it's great. Zips up, fits right in. Right. Um, this will go in. It's got a standard uh, Arca rail attachment. And this will go on to a tripod such as this. OK, this is a big ass tripod. Um, I would not put this on your backpack. I would keep this in your truck, maybe base camp, uh, anything like that. It's got a standard Arca up here um, and great mobility. It's very fluid with the head. All right. This is an Intradrill carbon fiber. Um, it is carbon fiber, but it's still heavy as shit. And this thing will stand up. If you're six foot five, this is a great tripod. Okay. You can also shoot off this tripod. It's very, very stable. Or use it as a rear support, whatever you want to do. I don't recommend hiking. I don't recommend going into the back country. It's more of a base camp. Okay. And now my last spotting scope is the Swarovski uh, brand new ATC uh, 17 to 40. It's got a small... I think it's a 42 mil objective, 44, I apologize, a 44 mil objective. So this is actually the same size objective as my scope on my hunting rifle, okay? Um, and, uh, but I will tell you, the cost of this is a lot more than the other scopes, all right? But the clarity you get, and even though it's a small objective, the, I think I can see myself through that. Whoa, that's uh that's kind of cool anyway um it's lightweight ish for the size it's actually heavier than you think it is but it doesn't take up room in your pack and that's what i really really like i got to run this down in mexico uh, a friend of mine uh nick uh had it uh, he is a guide for j scott outdoors right he was running that this year um and it was absolutely amazing and uh i just noticed that the uh, the Olin eyepiece stayed magnified to the lid here, right? So this, so Olin for the eyepiece on these things um, is great. It fit right on perfectly for that, okay? And what I'll do, where's my phone? Oh, it's on my chest. Amazing, right? It comes with this great case, okay? And from there, it slides right on. So you can uh, close things out that are going in front of my screen. Anyway, iPhone you have, right? Boop. And it stays right on. Simple, look in there. You can keep it on your tripod and it won't move. It doesn't vibrate. It doesn't come off unless you really shake the shit out of it. Now, if you're shaking the shit out of it while you're glassing, you're probably doing it wrong, All right? Um, let me take this chest rig off really quick. Oh, wow, that came off quick. So anyway, since I did get it off, let's get a couple more plugs in. Big Fish Foundation, right? Veterans organization, um, amazing organization throughout the entire country. Uh, the team out there is, uh, its sole purpose is to reconnect veterans, tune out the noise of life, bring everybody back to kind of square one, uh, bring awareness to veteran suicide uh, and other veteran services and mental health. And that is, that is, it's near and dear to my heart. Big Fish Foundation, link below. Also, uh, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, uh, take a look, look them up. Please donate, donate to both. Uh, this is an Armed Forces Initiative, and uh, feel free to join if you are a veteran and look for events in your area. Even if you're not a veteran, there are still events in your area. Okay, back to the Swaro. Amazing, amazing little scope. And this is the ATC. They do make a straight one called the uh, STC angled straight uh depends on just how you like to sit i like to sit with my chin down a little bit when i'm looking through the scope that's just me again marsupial makes a specific case just for that and it's pretty badass now with those little ones i run a smaller backpack tripod okay um there's quite a few out there uh two vets makes a pretty good one um they're expensive they're really expensive um, I chose the Leupold, and the reason I chose the Leupold is the weight with the head, and it's a simple head. You do not need a fancy one, right? Um, 
is under, I think it's right around 12 ounces. With my scope attached, or yeah, my spotting scope attached, and everything here is right around two pounds, okay? This thing adjusts all the way out. You can have the legs, you pull that out even further, right? They extend, and depending on what the terrain is, where you're sitting and glassing, this thing will mold right around you. I bring it up nice, nice and tight around my body. I'm sitting nice and I can just sit there all day long. I got my little stove over here. I can make some coffee or soup or whatever the shit I'm doing that day, uh, sitting on a ridge. Okay. It's a great system. Awesome system to hike with. Again, combined two pounds. Okay. That is extremely light for some luxuries to have while you're backcountry hunting. And I consider this a spotting scope with that an, a luxury, all right? Um, sometimes a necessity depending on the animal that you're actually hunting. So uh, it's fairly simple today, okay? Um, you're going to get what you pay for, okay? You're going to get what you pay for. Buy once, cry once. If you want something that is very, very budget-friendly or maybe even just cheaper than budget-friendly, um, just be better, get ready for the quality, okay? I would find the middle of the road. Start from there, figure out the pros and the cons once you start using it, um, and then upgrade later on like I did, okay? Um, I upgraded later on, and now I have a truck scope that is going to be absolutely amazing. That truck scope is going to go into back of my side-by-side -side or on the back of my quad, depending on where I'm at, right? good friend of mine did the same exact thing. He's got a big mother scope that he actually built a carrying rack in the back of his side-by-side -side just for that scope, right? Um, depends on where we hunt and how far it is and how comfortable you want to be and what your budget is. Okay. So, uh, any questions? Thank you for episode four. Uh, uh, uh.